Hey peeps. How you doing today? You good? That's good. Whoo! How I'm doing? I'm doing great, y'all. But your girl been busy. That video I'm making today probably will come out hmm, next week sometime. But, yeah, I started on a room, so that's what I was doing today. And, um, yeah. But for those that's not feeling good on whatever level, I got you. Let's send this prayer up to my Heavenly Father. Here we go. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We pray for any and everybody that is not feeling good in their minds, their body, their spirit, and their soul. We pray that you come through, you heal them. Deliver them, set them free from any and everything that's keeping them bound. And they hearts and they mask in Jesus' name. And Father, we're going to lift up those that done lost loved ones. We're going to take a moment of silence. Father, we pray that you comfort their heart, heal their heart, strengthen their heart, speak to their hearts, and encourage their hearts in your Son, Jesus' name. And Father, we're going to lift up those that's in the hospital or at home, bed bound. And we're going to touch and agree with them for full and complete healing and recovery in Jesus' name. Because by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. No weapon formed against us shall or will prosper. And great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen, 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 amen. Got her done. So, y'all, that was rain. Let me kind of put it on mute because I don't know. But yeah, yesterday I hit um, the date. I, well, today's date is March 14th. Y'all see that? Sometimes it'll show at 3:11 and a p.m. So a little after 3 o'clock, y'all, and today is Tuesday, Terrific Tuesday, Terrific Tuesday. Oh, I'm tired. And this time, time change that got me all messed up, for real, for real. So, the weather, let's look at the weather in the shot today. Isn't it be out there in the mean? Been in the 30s. Yep. So. Tuesday, March 14th. Mostly sunny. It's very sunny and cold. Real feel. 42. Real feel in the shade is 33. I guess it do give off different feels. But we got like three different numbers. It's like 34 degrees. Real feel. 42. Real feel in the shade is 34. I don't know. And the max wind gust is 18 miles per hour. And the sun rose at 7.05 this morning. Supposed to set at 6.56 in the p.m. Almost 7 o'clock. That's because that time went up, right? I'm not even getting ready to go down that rabbit hole, y'all, because every time. Ah, oh, I ain't. Oh, 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 I saw some 50s. I'm just thinking about how that time just jumped up like that. So today is 34 high. Wednesday is high is 51%. Zero precip. So it don't supposed to rain. I'm not. I can't pre precip. I, I don't even know why I tried that word. Thursday has 50, then we're going to dip again Friday, 39, Saturday, 28. What kind of shenanigans? Ooh, but after that, all oh, 50s. Okay, as long as it ain't snowing. No, 15 inches of snow. I'll take the cold. I'll just put my beast coat on. I don't even going out like that. But if I did have to go out there, I'm ready for the cold. I got my boots. I got my beast coat. I got hats. I got scarves. I ain't even had to wear no gloves like that. I'm going out like that. 
But I ain't tripping about it. Because I done did a lot of ribbon running in my day. So even from whew, taking the kids to school, going to pick them up, going to kids' functions, graduation. So it feel good to be able to just sit still and get her done. The little things that I want to knock off my list, I can use my energy for that. Okay? Okay. So, what else? So, I'm, I'm uh, doing the girls' room. I started. I, uh, the hubby took all the stuff. I went through all of that and put it back up in the closet on the shelf. So, I got that done. But it's like, it's, it's, it's parts to that room. Because I got to hit that rolling cart. I got to hit that part. Then, then, I got to get up under the bed and just, I, I'm just organizing and just, um, the stuff that I kept up there is simple. If she ever need to go through it, if she want to, when she come over, she go through it. It's easy because I organize it by categories, okay? And the stuff up under the bed, that she and stuff, so I got to figure that out. And then that rolling cart, it's a lot, a lot of little stuff up in there, so that's going to be tedious right there. That was tedious, but this going to be more tedious. So, yeah, and I think after that, I'll be done once I, it, it, once I get that rolling cart and go up on the shan bed and go through them bins up under there, I'll be ready for that basement. But right now, I ain't got to the basement yet because I'm, I'm fit up. I got, I need at least about three more of them big, the big 55-gallon tote bin, y'all in black. I'm going to need like four more. So I'm trying to get my goods before I start going there. But I don't know how long it's going to take me to do that. Because it's a lot of stuff I got to do in that basement. It's a lot of stuff. Because I feel the downsides too. Reorganize. It take me a minute because I go through everything. I go through everything. So yeah. But without further ado, I'm getting ready to do um, It's Women. History Month, so I picked out three, four women to do my read on. The first one I did was on Eve. I got that done. So now, let's get into it. Let's get into it, Eve. Let's get into it. Alright. Now I'm going to redo my hair because it's dry. It needs to be done. So I just uh, took the twist out. It's just basically I'm rocking the twist out. And I just combed the ends out. And one side of my hair is more fuller than the other side. Yeah, it's probably like my whole body like that. Anyways, let's get on into the read. I ain't got hungry. I'm eating a salad today and making me a smoothie. I ain't got no snacks. I don't even know what I want to snack on. Oh, my Cheetos been gone. I've been snacking on the moon pie, but it's only one left and I don't want to eat the last one. Say that for the hubby. Huh. But the Sonny, he got, he got cheesecake in there and a banana pie in there. Oh, no. I, I'm really trying not to eat that. But, ooh, I be having a sweet tooth like around 7 or 8 o'clock at night. <coughs> It be serious. So, y'all, let's get on into it. Y'all ready? Okay, I got you. So, my second woman I'm about to read about. This 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 is gonna be quick and short, but I mean it's informational. Is who is Sarah? Sarah, her name was Sarah. But God changed it to Sarah. But, yeah, we fit to read about Sarah. If you don't know nothing about Sarah, here it is. Who was Sarah in the Bible? That's the question. But what the answer is, I know it's just been running because I was full of all the spices yesterday. I declare I was on cloud 88 or something because, whoo, herbs. It ain't just that marijuana herb and all the other herbs. They had me 
lying, floating. I felt it. I felt it. Full with all them spices and herbs. Yeah, I was so glad to go to sleep and sleep that off. <laughs> I'm like, I felt loopy yesterday fool, after I got through food with all them spices. I was like, whoa, what? Uh-uh. I ain't like that feeling. I needed to go to sleep. Yeah, I'm like, I need all my marbles and stuff. I have to be focused at all times. For real, say nothing gonna catch me slacking, loopy, lacking. No, nope. ooh, I done made that worse. How I do that? But anyways, I can still see. Answer. Sarah began her life in the pagan world of Ur, in the land of the Chaldees, which was located in the area now known as Iraq. Iraq. Did y'all know that? Sarah. Began her life in a pagan, they go that word pagan, world of Ur, which is now, it's located in an area now known as Iraq. She was the half sister as well as the wife of Abraham, okay? Y'all hear that? Who would be called Abraham. She was his half sister. So basically they had probably different daddies. They was doing that back in the day. Not today, people. It's an abomination today. That's the repopulated. Mm -hmm. People be ugh. She was the half sister as well as the wife of Abraham, who would be called Abraham. Sarai and Abraham had the same father but different mothers. Oh, I still wouldn't want to do that. That don't even sound right today. According to Genesis 20, Genesis chapter 20, verse 12. In the Bible, in those days, genetics were purer than they are today. Yeah, God had not too long, he had just created man and woman. From Adam and Eve to Abraham and Sarah, it, it wasn't too many generations in between. And into marriages was not detrimental, detrimental to the offspring of unions between relatives. Also, since people tended to spend their lives clustered together in family units, it was the natural course to choose mates from within their own tribes and families. Yeah, they did. I do some. I still do. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, but African people did it. You know. I would not want to marry nobody in my family. You. <laughs> when Abraham encountered the living God for the first time, he believed Genesis 12, 1 through 4, and 15 and 6, and followed after him, obeying his command to leave his home to go to a place he had never heard about, much less seen. Sarah went with him. Their journey brought them to the area called Haran. That's in Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Oh, this is going to be a long one. I don't see them doing all that talking. Um, Abraham's father, Terah, passed away in this city. And Abraham, Sarah, and his nephew, Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. And their retinue. Retinue continued their journey, allowing God to lead and guide them with no housing and no modern conveniences. No housing and no modern conveniences. The journey must have been very difficult for all, especially for the women. Ooh. Thank God for cars today, huh? Buses, trains, all that. Transportation. During their journey, there was a famine in the land, prompting Abraham and Sarah to go to Egypt. And that's in Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. When they did, Abraham feared that the Egyptians would kill him because Sarah was beautiful. Wow. And they would want her as a wife. Wow. 
So he asked Sarah to tell everyone that she was Abraham's sister, which she was, which was technically technically true, but also meant to deceive. You like I ain't well, I ain't ready to die for that. <laughs> Sarah was taken into Pharaoh's house, and Abraham was treated well because of her. Oh well, okay, beauty. Okay, look what beauty do. Yeah, Abraham treated well because of Sarah, beauty. But God afflicted Pharaoh's house, and the couple's lie was revealed. Ah, God exposed that. Pharaoh returned Sarai to Abraham and sent them on their way. He's like, look, y'all get up out of here. That was a good story, though. Genesis is just a good read, period. And that's in Genesis chapter 12. Sarai and Abraham came back to the land now known as Israel. Mm. They had acquired many possessions and a great deal of wealth in their travels. So Lot and Abraham agreed to split up in order that the massive herds of cattle will have an adequate ground for grazing. And that's in Genesis chapter 13, verse 9. They left with little, came black back with plenty. Won't God do it? Sarah was barren. Wow. An issue of personal distress as well as cultural shame. When you was barren back then, and probably today, you know, yeah, personal distress. You can't have a baby. And cultural shame because you can't have a baby. Like, what's wrong with you? Why you barren? Why you can't have no kids? Abraham was worried that he would have no heir. But God gave Abraham a vision in which he promised him a son that his descendant will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And that's in Genesis chapter 15. God also promised Abraham's offspring the land of Canaan. The problem was that Sarah remained childless. Ten years after God had made his promise to Abraham, Sarah following cultural norms, suggested, she suggested that Abraham have a child with her servant, Hagar. Homie, don't play that. You just going to be airless. <laughs> Homie ain't playing that. Going to sleep with who? My sister, my servant. No, you just won't have no kids. <laughs> Man, what? She was desperate. The child born of that union will be counted as Sarai's. Mm -hmm. Abraham agreed and Hagar conceived a son. Abraham agreed. I know you did agree. And Hagar conceived a son, Ishmael. But Hagar began to look at Sarah with contempt like, <laughs> I had his son. You didn't though. Okay. You can have him physically, but I did that. We know the son that really is. Wow, see, I don't got time for that. But Hagar began to look at Sarah with contempt. And Sarah began to treat Hagar harshly. Why? It was your idea, lady. Woman, that was your idea. So much so that Hagar ran away. Wow. God met Hagar, though. Ooh, but God. God met Hagar in the desert and encouraged her to return to Abraham and Sarah. And she did. Wow. She was obedient. And that was in um, Genesis chapter 16. 13 years after Ishmael was born. 13 years after Ishmael was born. God reaffirmed his covenant with Abraham. That's the thing. When God make a promise, he ain't going to, what's the song? He don't show up when you want to, but he show up right on time. You just got that out of patience of Job. God reaffirmed his covenant with Abraham, this time giving him the sign of circumcision, as well as changing his name. Abraham meaning high father, because Abraham meaning father of a multitude. God also changed Sarah's name, meaning my princess, to Sarah meaning mother of nations. Wow. God told Abraham that he would give him a son through Sarah. 
this son, Isaac, will be the one with whom God would establish his covenant. Oh, ain't that something how God established his covenant with Isaac? But Israel was the firstborn. But by Hagar, though. Hmm. Oh, okay. Let's keep it moving. God would bless Ishmael as well, but Isaac was the son of promise through whom the nations will be blessed. And that's in Genesis chapter 17. I don't care what people say. I don't care. But when God say what he say, can't nobody stop it. Regardless of how people felt the feel about it, felt about it, whatever. You know? He said Isaac will be who he established his covenant with. But Ishmael was blessed too. God is fair. God, okay. Isaac means he laughs. Abraham laughed that. Abraham laughed that at 100 years old, he could have a son with Sarah. Sarah, who was 90 years old and had been bearing her entire life. Sarah too laughed. At the prospect. And that's in Genesis chapter 18 verse 9 through 15. So they was 10 years apart. Abraham was 100. Sarah was 90. Well, I'd imagine. Ooh, you're having a baby at 90 years old. But God. Shortly after God promised Abraham and Sarah's son. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah is a good story. But he rescued Abraham's nephew, Lot. That's in Genesis chapter 19. Abraham and Sarah journeyed toward Negev and sojourned in Gerar. That's in Genesis chapter 20, verse 1. Abraham at, again asked Sarah to lie about her identity. And the king of Gerar took Sarah to be his wife. Oh, snap. She must have been real pretty, y'all. But God protected Sarah, through whom Isaac would be born. King Abimelech had no relations with her. God warned Abimelech in the dream. And the king not only sacrificed to God in repentance, but he gave gifts to Abraham and Sarah and allowed them to dwell in the land. But God, only God can do this right here. That's in Genesis chapter 20. God remained faithful to his promise to give Abraham and Sarah a son. They named him Isaac. And Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she, and she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him in, borne him a son in his old age. And that's in Genesis chapter 21, verses 6 through 7. Though she may have previously laughed in disbelief and secrecy, now Sarah laughed for joy and wanted her situation to be known. God had been faithful to his promise and blessed her. And is powerful for those that have faith and believe in God, my heavenly Father. When he show up, mm, he show out. Unfortunately, the tension between Sarah and Hagar remained. Hagar, like, I'm all that. Hey, look, you, you look, look. <laughs> when Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a feast. But Ishmael, Hagar's son, was mocking Isaac. Oh, he like his mama, like, I'm the first born one, man. I'm older than you, man. <laughs> Sarah told Abraham to get rid of Hagar and Ishmael and that Ishmael should never share the inheritance with Isaac. And she started all this dough. See, we be doing too much. We be doing too much. Abraham was distressed at this. But God told him to do what Sarah said and that his descendants would be numbered through Isaac. Wow, ain't that something Sarah like, get rid of, get rid of Ishmael. He mocking Isaac. He messing with Isaac. He don't deserve to be in the same space as Isaac. And when he told Abraham to get rid of his son, he like, huh? What? Woman, you 
you suggest this was all your idea, though? What you thought? She wasn't thinking. And she didn't have our faith nor the patience to wait for God to fulfill his promise. Okay? She got she 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 got anxious and patient. But God, but God came and spoke to Abraham and said, you know what? Go on do it. Because Isaac is the one that I'm going to fulfill my promise with. See, Abraham was like, okay, I hear you. I don't know. But how, when God had to come and speak and tell him, it's all right. It's good. Abel. No, not Abel. Adam. <laughs> Should have had that ear to ear. You know, all things probably look different right now. Okay, anyway, let's keep it moving. Abraham sent Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael away, and God provided for their needs. God is faithful and just. That's in Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. It was after this that God tested Abraham. By asking him to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham was willing to give up his son. Trusting that God would somehow still remain true to his promises. And that's in Genesis chapter 22. And Hebrews New Testament. Chapter 11 verses 17 through 18. Man that's some faith. That's some trust. When the very son that he promised to give you. Now he's telling you to sacrifice. Wow. But he was going to do it because he trusted God. Like, okay, you give it, you take it away. Man, that's deep, y'all. That's deep. That's a powerful place to be. Sarah was a simple, beautiful, and very human woman. She made mistakes just like we all do. She stepped ahead of God and tried to handle his business on her own by foolishly sending her handmaid Hagar to Abraham to bring forth the child God had promised. In so doing, she ignited a feud that lasted for 4,000 years. Man, our females, be, we be doing too much. Genesis chapter 16 verse 3. She laughed in unbelief when at 90 years old, she heard an angel tell Abraham that she would become pregnant. And that's in Genesis chapter 18 verse 12. But she gave birth to the promised child and lived another 30 years, dying at the age of 127. And that's in the book of Genesis chapter 23 verse 1. But God. But God I live. God I die. He got this. Ooh, he got this. Hebrews 11, 11, chapter 11, verse 11, uses Sarah as an example of faith. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she, was, she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. First Peter Chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 uses Sarah as an example of a holy woman who hoped in God and who adorned herself by submitting to her husband. Sarah willingly left her home and stepped out into the unknown to follow Abraham. As he followed the directions of a God with whom she was unfamiliar at the time, she endured much to try to provide an heir for her husband and to keep her husband safe in dangerous lands. Like, you know, I'll be your sister. Low key she was. In the end, she had faith enough to believe that she and her husband at the ages of 90 and 100 will produce the promised heir, Isaac. Although she lived in a world of danger and confusion, Sarah stood firm in her commitment to her husband and to God. And her commitment was rewarded with blessing. 
Wow. That's a powerful way to end off the story of Sarah. Sarah. Wow. Nevertheless, she was faithful and she was loyal. Like he said, she stood by her man. Travel with him. Because they both lived in the land of Ur. And she had to pack it up and leave her family behind as well. But she followed her husband. And God told Abraham, get up. Get up out of this land with these pagans. And he had an ear to hear. He followed God and she followed him. And then and, and that's the order. Wow, that's deep. So alright, y'all, I got her done. I like, I always liked the story of Sarah. She was, she, I, I get it, you know, she, I, I get the whole thing why she had, um, she was older, and I'm probably sure Hagar was younger, her handmaid, you know, like, like handmaid's tail. <laughs> Y'all watch that, that was good. I don't do it, is it still coming on? I don't know. But anyway, how you get your handmaid to your, to your, uh, husband. And whatever child they have is considered the wife, the wife, then just like handmaid's tale, you know, because she was concerned about her age, you know, no children. I get it. We all been there. But God, so I'm gonna leave that like that, y'all. I got her done. I'm tired too because I've been at it from the spice jars to that closet. But I got her done and everything. But it's a lesson in the story of Sarah, Sarah slash Sarah, and everything, you know. Um, we all, as women, been there. But nevertheless, she was loyal and she was faithful. And she trusted her husband and she trusted God. And that trumped. Alright, y'all. Even though she... Like... Abraham go sleep with... Hey, God. God didn't get mad at her and just say... I'm not gonna bless you with no child now. You know, he ain't like... Say, hmm. You weren't supposed to do that, so... You ain't gonna get pregnant now. You are not gonna experience that. Because his promise was to Abraham. You get what I'm saying? His promise was to Abraham. So, alrighty, y'all. So, I got her done. So, I hope y'all enjoyed the story. Uh, a woman in history. We will. I'm going all the way back. I'm taking it back. And I hope y'all enjoyed it. My input, my insight. And when, as I was reading, whatever you thought, you know, whatever it triggered. Whatever made you like, hmm, hmm, that right there. So, today is Tuesday. This is going to be my Tomorrow Wednesday video. So, I hope everybody have a blessed Wednesday, a safe Wednesday, productive Wednesday. Get her done on whatever level. And a protective Wednesday and Thursday. And I'll see y'all back at the table on Friday, maybe Thursday. We'll see. I'm just putting my videos out there. Because at this point, like I'm doing a lot of cleaning. I'm getting her done. So, I'm just pushing them out, pushing them out. And so, I'll see y'all back at the table on Friday. And on that note, I'm out. Peace, love, share, something, and what? I'll holla.